Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 through 2. This is our foundational text for possessing your abundance. That's the series that we're on. But today's lesson is entitled, look at me, A Revelation of Canaan. A Revelation of Canaan. Canaan land, the place that God is bringing us into. He brought the children of Israel into Canaan. A revelation of Canaan. Come on, say it with me. A revelation of Canaan. That's what today's lesson is. So looking at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 through 2, this is the NLT, the New Living Version. It says, when the Lord your God brings you into the land, you're about to enter and occupy. Say enter, enter. And, occupy. and occupy. He will clear away many nations ahead of you. The Hittites, the Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Pezzarites, Hivites, and the Jebusites. These seven nations are greater and more numerous than you. However, when the Lord your God hands these, no whoa, wait a minute. They're greater and numerous, but when the Lord God hands these nations over to you and you conquer them, that's the magic word. Everybody underline that word, conquer them. He says you must completely destroy them. The text goes on to say make no alliances with them. He says remember who you are when you come into your wealthy place. Don't forget about God. Neglect those enemies, see. Don't make any unholy ties with the enemy when you come into your wealthy place. This text is very interesting. The text does two things. It describes God's part and your part. Let's see if you can find it. Let's see if you can recognize. He says, when the Lord God brings you into the land, you're about to enter and occupy. So who's bringing you into the land? God. Whose part is that? God. Ah, whose part is it? God. That's God's part. When the Lord God brings you into the, that's God's part. You're about to enter and occupy. Whose part is that? Yeah, you got something to do. It says he will clear away the nations ahead of you. Whose part is that? God's going to clear the nations. He's going to move those strongholds that are before you. He says these seven nations that are greater and numerous. This is when the Lord God hands them over to you. Whose part is that? He says you'll conquer them. Whose part is that? He says, you must completely destroy them. Whose part is that? Our part. Okay, that's good. I love it. It's just two scriptures, but the two scriptures lay out plainly God's part, your part. Amen. He says, but I need you to begin to believe your part. Amen. If it's in the book, ladies and gentlemen, if it's in the book, believe it. Didn't ask you to think about it, talk about it, make logic of it. If it's in the book, believe it. Canaan is the place of God's divine abundance for his children. Do you believe it? Yes. So our opening text reveals that it is God himself that is escorting us into, check your blanks out, this predestined place of destiny, place of plenty. Let me correct that. This predestined place of plenty. Come on, say it with me. Place of plenty. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Deshaun. So enter and occupy. He says, when you enter and occupy your place of abundance, which you're doing today, 
The word enter and occupy, what he's really saying, he says, when you advance, I want you to hold the ground that you're advancing on. Yeah. Advance and hold. Come on, advance yeah. and hold. That's what occupy means, to advance and hold. You don't, you don't lose ground. That's the blanks we want to fill in. Place of plenty. Look at Luke chapter 19, verse 12. And he said, this is the king talking. A nobleman, well, this is Jesus talking, and he's giving a parable of a king. He said, a nobleman was called away to a distant empire to be crowned king and then return. Can we put it in the apple pie? I'm sorry. Can we do King James? I want you to see this. Occupy means to what? Advance. To not lose any ground. All right, here we go. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went to a far country to receive his kingdom, to receive for himself a kingdom, and then to return. In verse 13, and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said to them, Occupy till I come. So Jesus is telling a parable about this kingdom and how it's going to manifest. He says the king is going to go away for a minute, but he's giving you something to do while he's gone. He says, occupy, advance, and hold. I'm going to give you something to work with. I'm going to give you an inheritance. He called them to him and gave them 10 pounds. He says, now use this to advance and hold, to occupy until I come. Come on, say with me, I have, I have an, inheritance. an inheritance. It's in the book, in the book. And, I it. and I believe it. Look, I didn't ask you what was in your bank account. I'm going by what's in the book. Come on, tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Dr. Debbie, Dr. Debbie is, giving is giving us truth. It's in the word of God. It's, word of God. it's, true. it's true. And I believe it. And I believe it. If it's in the book, you do what? Believe it. If it's in the book, Miss Darlene, yeah, believe it. The king is saying, he says, go into and conquer with what I'm giving you. Did everybody hear me? Yes. This is what the king is saying to his servants. Go into and conquer with what I'm giving you. He said, buy and sell until I return. But this morning, I want you to take that object, your mind. And I want you to begin to agree with what's in the book. That's why your object this morning, your mind that you brought with you, is so imperative. It is so imperative that, Breon, it's what you are going to use to enter in and occupy. God doesn't want you fighting and scrapping and you know, competing with others. He just wants you to think differently. If God can get you to think differently this morning, you can occupy. You can take territory. You can come into your inheritance. You can walk right on over into Canaan, Miss Audrey. Let's look at Matthew for a moment. The book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. I want to show you this. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to do what? Preach. And say, in his preaching, he said, repent. 
for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. The reason I'm showing you this is because the word repent means to change the way you think. The word repent means to turn back to God, to begin to think according to the book. Repent. He said, if I can get you to change your thinking this morning. Come on, tell your neighbor, she's a social worker. She's a social worker. She knows what she's talking about. She knows what she's, talking about. She's, a she's a social worker. Filled with the word of God. Filled with the word of God. She knows what she's talking she about. Hallelujah. What I'm saying to you this morning is to change the way you think about possessing and owning something. Oh, my goodness. Do you, would you mind getting that mic? Yeah. And would you turn around and face the audience and tell them the word that you receive? October 12th, and the manifestation of that word. Just real simple. Uh. I think, is it on? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just real. Uh, on the day she's talking about, she had made a comment this one over my shoulder uh, on saying a certain date. October 12th, and at the time, I was actually thinking about something that uh, I was working on, or that God actually has helped me work on, and that I've been praying about. It was uh, closing in on my first home. Uh, as I shared with Dr. Debbie, this would be my first home ever, because I grew Hold up. Hold the mic up. I grew up. Yeah. Uh, in uh, the projects. With, Listen. Uh, a single parent who... Uh, made everything work for uh, her four kids. So this would be a big step, and that would be my first home. So Not only your first home, but your first room. My first room, because uh, I've never had a room. Uh, Come on, hold the mic up. They need to hear this. Because I never had a room of my own before, so this would be my first everything. Um, so whenever she... Uh, said October 12th, uh, I kind of looked over my shoulder, I was like, oh, she was talking to someone else besides me. But, I was like, I'm going to take it. It's, that's my word, too, because it came to mind somewhere in the scripture. Somebody needs to take this. That where, uh, when, uh, I think it was a lady that was speaking to Jesus, and she was asking for something, and her comment uh, moved him, because her comment was, even the, uh, even the dogs deserve the scraps. So even though she was talking to someone else, I was like, that's going to be mine. So, uh, uh, so I went home and I spoke to my fiance, future wife, that said, Dr. Debbie was talking to somebody else. And she said October 12th. And I don't think that she knew that I was thinking about her house, but Dr. Debbie knows a lot of stuff. So... I'm going to take it, and I'm going to rest on it, saying that, uh, saying that it's for us. Uh -huh. So, again, we prayed on it, and I just gave, it gave me something to focus on a certain date. So the 12th did come, and the 12th did pass. But on the 22nd, everything closed uh -huh. without it. So, <laughs> so I have my first home, my first room ever. We've never, we've never seen anything like that. It's like watching that man on that stretcher, you know? A kid comes from the projects, being raised by a single mom, to ownership. Yes. I can own my own home. Go to Proverbs chapter 23, please, verse 27. See, that man took that word. Yes. This is Dr. Arthur 
for those of you who don't know. He's a practicing chiropractic here in the city of Lake Charles with satellite offices soon to be around the state. But he took that word and made it his own. Yes. He began to meditate it and yes. use his mind to think about ownership yes. and brought it to pass. Yes. God's about to do something, and he's not asking us to do anything that he's, he's not already equipped us with. Yes. He equipped you with a mind. He is expecting you to take ownership, take territory, take over. You know, there was a time when the angel of the Lord showed up on earth and right in the middle of a battle, good and evil, and that angel showed up with us wielding a sword And Joshua and the people of God said to the angel, listen, because I want you to repeat this. Are you here to take sides, you know, us or them? The angel yelled out, no, we're not here to take sides. We're here to take over. It's in the book. Believe it. Proverbs 23, verse 7 declares, ready, it's on the screen, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Stop. For as he thinks in his heart, so how do you think that Dr. Arthur inherited that, that house? He had to start thinking differently. In his heart, you can't think projects forever. That's right. And not. It worked for his mom, and it worked for those siblings, and it worked for that moment. But when he started to think ownership, I'm having my own kids, my own wife, my own family. Ownership. Let's see how that fits. When he started to think that, he inherited that. That's right. Oh, wow. When he started to think that, he inherited that. So, is your inheritance waiting on you to think right? Come on. Come on. Thoughts are key to your abundance. Remember I said you brought the ob object lesson with you? Yes. Yeah. On your handout, your thoughts are key to your abundance. On your handout, there's a confession. I'd like to make that confession right now. My thoughts are key to my abundance. So I want to make this confession. You see the confession? Yes. Everybody, let's read it together now. Everybody ready? Read. I am moving. I am entering my place of divine abundance. I embrace Canaan. I believe that I receive Canaan. It is my wealthy place. It's my place of plenty. It's my place of more than enough. That's what Canaan represents. Wow. My thoughts are directing my abundance. You cannot sit around and think poverty and defeat all day long and at the end of the day, look for abundance. Abundance follows thoughts of abundance. Abundance follows thoughts of abundance. I'm not talking money, please. I'm talking abundance, 
Abundance can get you up out of a sick bed. Abundance can get you the peace of mind you need. Abundance is far greater than money. Let's take a look at Canaan this morning. Numbers chapter 13. Let's fill in some more of these blanks. Numbers 13, verse 1 through 2, and then verse 17 through 20. And the Lord said to Moses, send out some men to scout out and, uh, for yourselves the land of Canaan. Hmm. He says, go do it for yourself. I know what's in Canaan already. You go scout it out for yourselves. He says, see the land of Canaan, which I See the land of Canaan, which I is done already. My inheritance is laid up. All I got to do is start. God says, I gave it to the Israelites already. Then it goes on to say, from each tribe, send the man of their fathers. You shall send a man, every one a leader or a head among them. Come on, everybody say leadership. Leadership, leadership takes ownership. Yeah. So verse 17 says, so Moses sent them out to scout out the land of Canaan and said to them, check this out. Everybody, I need you to read your hand out and pay attention. It says, Get up this way by the south of Negev and go up to the hill country. Look at verse 18. Let's read it together. Everybody ready? Read. And see what the land, come on, whether the people who dwell there are strong or weak. Verse 20. And what the land is, whether it's fat or lean, timber or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Check it out. Now the time was the time of what? First right grace. Yeah, God doesn't play with us this morning. Look at this. He says, I'm going to send you into Canaan at the right moment. I want you to see something that will coincide with the word I'm speaking. I want there to be proof in your life. I want you to have some evidence of what I'm saying. So he picked a time and a season of the first right grace for the spies to go into Canaan and bring back evidence of the fruit that I'm conveying to you is already yours. Just happened to be the season of the first ripe grace. Yeah, it just happened to be. I don't think it's a coincidence. I think God chose what we call Kairos timing. Yes. The timing of God, Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, for them to get the evidence of what God was saying to them. He says, I need you to see this because you're not going to inherit what you can't see. You got to see it. You got to be able to think it in your mind, imagine it. Oh, yeah. He said, and then you can inherit it. Look at that first bullet point. God desired that Israel understood the nature of the promised land where he had desired and planned for them to receive as an inheritance. He desired for them to know firsthand the way they were get, uh, that they were getting ready, what they were getting ready to walk into, an unimaginable, Here's the blank, wealthy and wealth and prosperity. He desired them to know firsthand 
that they were getting ready to walk into Miss Ashley unimaginable wealth and prosperity. Miss Christina, he said, unimaginable wealth and prosperity. Unimaginable. Do you remember the man on the stretcher when Miss Lily and the praise team did God's about to do something? Unimaginable. Miss Kathy, wealth and prosperity. It's not just for me. It's not just for you. It's for nations. It's for that assignment that God has on your life. It's for the population of people that he wants you. Unimaginable wealth and prosperity. What am I supposed to do with all that? That's what you need to be asking yourself. Who is this for, Lord? Unimaginable. Miss Christian, unimaginable. Wealth and prosperity. I'm so glad that you were brave enough to tell what God has done for you. I'm so glad, Dr. Arthur. I know it wasn't comfortable. But I have a, a, a new respect for the word of God. I want you to just uh, put a mark on your handout where we stop right there because we're going to keep filling in that um, at bullet point number three. But I need you to go to Psalms. Oh, I think it's Psalms 105. Come on, take a quick trip with me. Psalms 105, verse 1. He was willing to share what God has done for him. Psalms 105, verse 1, says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Are you with me? Yes. Quick trip. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Yes. Oh, give, I have a newfound respect yes. for the word. Yes. It's good for me to know what he's done for me. Yes. But it's powerful for you to know Preach. what he's done for me. Yes. Because... Now you know the works of God. That's what I'm after. I'm not bragging or boasting on what I've received. I'm not bragging or boasting on what God has done for him. But I want all of us to know about the powerful works of God. Look at what he says. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Right. Miss Wendy, come on, Miss Wendy. Yeah. The Bible says, make known his deeds yes. among the people. Let them know. Yes, Don't sit on it. Yes, you're not bragging on you, you're bragging on God. That's right. Keep going. Sing unto the Lord. Sing psalms unto him. He says, talk ye of all his wonderful. He said, don't shut up about it. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Keep going. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them that rejoice seek the Lord. Seek the Lord with his strength. Seek his face evermore. Verse 5 says, remember. Come on, let's read together. Remember his marvelous works. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Read it again. That 
That is my newfound revelation. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he pronounced. Give glory to God. Give, give glory to God. Boast in him. Look, he says, when all that wealth, abundance, and prosperity, when those little things, when those answered prayers start flowing into your life, he says, give glory to God. Don't shut up about it. God gave you that instrument to glorify him. What happened when that man got up off that stretcher? The Bible said they start giving glory to God. I mean, they were amazed, rubbing their eyes, but they started giving glory to God. You can do that. Okay, let's pick up a bullet three, uh, bullet point number three. As we close, he says, he specifically wanted the children of Israel to see and understand the people, the geography, the culture, and the abundance of natural resources. You got the blanks? I want everybody to get an A at the end of this course. So I want you to have all your blanks filled in. This is the first time you have all your blanks filled in. All right. All right. I'm standing in for the other teacher. Right. I know. I'll go home with blanks. Like, what was that answer number? Yeah. He specifically wanted these people that are sitting under the sound of my voice to understand the people, the geography, the culture, and the natural So you got to remember what he said in that text. He said, go spy out the land. Check out, see if it's good or, you know, if it's healthy. See if the soil is good. He said, check out the culture how they're living, whether the cities are fortified. You remember that text? He said, check out the natural resources. Tell me what the fruit and the timber is like. This refers to that scripture. He says, go and check out, look, go see if what I'm saying is true. See if what I'm saying matches the picture. This is God's natural way of functioning. This is how God functions. Are you listening to me? Yes, ma'am. I'm saying to you that what God told the children of Israel to do, he gave them a promise, much like he's giving you. The promise was already provided for. It was called Canaan. Everybody say Canaan. And at that point, he says, now I want you to go over, send some spies to see what Canaan is like. Just go and get the evidence and bring it back. And what I saw in that description is that this is God's way of functioning. He's saying some things to you right now. If you do not add logic to it, you'll inherit it. If you don't water it down, you'll inherit it. If you don't put two cents in or your reasoning, you'll inherit it. Because this is how God operates. Look at the next bullet point, the most important instruction that he gave the leaders when they went to spy out the land was to be of good courage. He said, I just need you, Miss Luethel, to be brave. Can you do that for me? Can you just be brave? Can you be resolute, unnerved, and have some guts about you? Can you do that? He says, if you can do that, then you're walking in how I function. Because in the natural they're going to show you some mighty things over there in Canaan. You're going to see some big stuff. 
from them and from me. But I don't need you to be afraid. I need you to be brave. That was an important part of the instructions that they received. Now hold your finger at that last bullet point right there. Because I want to talk to you for a second off the record. We're just going to act like the cameras aren't rolling right now. Because when they got over there and they saw that, yep, it's exactly like God said. But they went back and they told a different story. They added to what God had said. This is 12 spies from the 12 tribes. Two of them said, uh, that's not what God said. Right. 10 of them said, we got to add our two cents in. Yeah. Right. Stay with me now. Just for a second, humor me and go to uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. My clock says I'm almost done. Oh, Numbers 14, verse 1. This is it. Based on what they said, they used the three million people that they were speaking to formed a picture in their mind based on what they said. Now, did they see Canaan? Nope. But it was what was being taught, what was being preached, what was being ministered that affected the three million people that heard it. So this is why God's saying, be brave. Look at what happened in Numbers 14, verse 1. And all the congregation, after they heard what those ten spies said, they lifted up their voice and cried. Nobody's rejoicing. And the people did what? What do you think they sounded like? Three million people. Oh, we're going to die. Canaan is a land that eats uh, us up. We're in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so are we in theirs. And God is like, that's, that's not what I said. I told you to be brave for one thing. It's because the words that we hear, Miss Mercedes, will paint such a picture in our lives. You got to watch what you're listening to. It will talk you right out of your inheritance. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Write it down. Write it down, sister, because your inheritance is waiting for you. And you got some naysayers, some bystanders, some critics standing by. If I was you, I wouldn't. If I was you. Well, thank God you're not me. In the name of Jesus. The last bullet point there, this implied, when he said be brave, he said that you are going to see some great and mighty things. But do not be intimidated by those who are currently <clears throat> occupying the land because you shall drive them right out of there. You're going to drive them out. Why would you be afraid? The importance of possession. Come on, say ownership. ownership. And control. Numbers 13, verse 30, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once 
and possess it, for we are well able to conquer it. Oh, my goodness. Possession is taking ownership. Ownership. That's your blank. Taking complete control over. Seizing something or taking complete control over when necessary. Seizing when necessary and taking complete control over. You got that blank? The word occupy, the one that we saw in Luke 15, occupy. He said it's time to take ownership. To oc- so listen, I'm going to wrap this up, but I'm going to give you your blanks. <laughs> but that ownership piece, God didn't say pull a million dollars out of your pocket to take ownership. He says, I just need you to use your object lesson, your object this morning. I just need you to think right. Can you imagine for a moment the only thing that's separating you from a spiritual godly inheritance of exactly what you need is your thought life. Who in the room of all these people in this room, just raise your hand and show me honestly, guys, that you did 15 minutes, 15 minutes of meditation this morning. Just 15 minutes of meditating the word. 15 minutes. Just 15 minutes. Between brushing your teeth, opening your eyes, and brushing your teeth. Fifteen minutes. Look, you don't even need to have brushed your teeth to do this. Fifteen minutes. Just pick that scripture, meditate on it, and see it. Envision it. That's how you're drawing it to you. This thing isn't magical, guys. It's not going to work by magic. But God does need your part. God says, I'm willing to do my part if you do your part. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Miss. Layla, I dare you, 15 minutes, just focusing on that A, just getting an A in math, an A in science. I have a grade of A. I'm a 4.0 student. I complete all my assignments. I'm the best in my class. 15 minutes. The Bible says the mind of the righteous, the memory of the righteous is blessed. in you. Second bullet point, possession does not occur without deliberation and negotiation or negotiating. That's how possession does not occur. You don't deliberate and negotiate with the enemy. Whatever occupies what God has declared for your life, is your enemy. If God has declared it for your life and somebody else is occupying it, that's the enemy, and they must go. They got to go. Possession of your abundance requires that you trust the God of abundance. You see that bullet point? Possession of your abundance requires that you trust the God of abundance, who is your father, and your provider. Um, movie spoiler. I want to. I want to encourage you to go see the movie Harriet. Yes. 
but the movie spoiler that I want to talk to you about was just this one tiny section in the movie where one of the women at the safe houses that she had gone into, talking about Harriet Tubman, the movie, the movie. When she went into that house, this lady is equipping her and getting her ready and prepared to walk in her newfound freedom. And the woman in the house says to her, in order for you to be successful, she says, remember this one thing. Fear is the enemy. Trust God. Just like that. Miss Alicia, if I know fear is the enemy, then I need to magnify my trust in God. I trust you, Lord. Hey, that means fear got to go. Fear is the enemy. Trust God. Come on, say it with me. Fear is the enemy. Trust God. When I see fear, I feel in fear. It's approaching me. The enemy's giving me something to fear. I see all kinds of obstacles coming against me. That's my opportunity to trust Psalms chapter 44, verse 3. Wow. Everybody, please look at this. We're getting ready to walk out the door. Fear is the enemy. Trust God. Look at what happened in Psalms 44, verse 3. It's just a recount of what the children of Israel experienced when they went into Canaan. So it says, for they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Fear is the enemy. Trust God. That's not how they got the land. It said, neither did their own arm save them. That's not how they got the land. It says, but the right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor upon them. Since they got it, this is the Amplified Classic. There it is. Come on, let's read it together. Ready? Read. <laughs> Say it again together loud and hard. For they got not the land of Canaan in possession by their own sword. They didn't do it. Neither did their own arms say it. They didn't do it. But the right hand and your right hand did it. Guys, we're right back where we started from that God is favorable toward us. Look at that last part of the statement there. It says you were favorable toward a bunch of slaves, captured people, held in captivity. Come on, say it with me. Slaves, slaves. One, minute, one minute, walking in abundance, walking in abundance. The, next minute. the next minute. 